Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. And today I kind of wanted to talk about support ships. Now, there are ships in the game like um, the 890 Jump, which is supposed to come with the 85X and the G12 and the Carrot that's supposed to come with the Pisces. So there are ships in the game that actually come with snubs like uh, the Constellation series with the Archimedes. Uh, but also, uh, I wanted to talk about additional support ships, ships that are designed to be used in combination with other ships to accomplish its overall goal. So I thought this was kind of a fun video idea to kind of do a deep dive around this career, this gameplay loop, and the ships that really embody what uh, you know, this gameplay is going to have to offer. Now, as the, sh the game becomes more filled out, um, working with other players is going to become a lot more important. And, you know, as you work in an org or work together to accomplish things, these ships, uh, gameplay loops will shine a bit more. Right now, it, you know, players really look for ships that are able to make money on their own. But of course, as the game becomes larger and more deep, then these systems will slowly get added in. So what do we have right here? So I kind of have a pretty simple criteria, uh, ships that are designed around a specific use case. Um, not that combat isn't a specific use case, but it is a use case that uh, can really make money kind of all on its own. Um, so, uh, I have two lists here, the, the heavily dependent ships. And I think these ships are very interesting because I feel like, you know, potentially CIG might release more ships like them. And then we have the ships that are less dependent on working in a fleet and can, you know, potentially make money all on their own, okay? And I think, you know, because, uh, you know, the conversation around these ships are so interesting, we're gonna kind of start with this one. So first at the top here, we have the Starfield. And the Starfield, in my opinion, is a perfect example of a support ship. Because right now, the Starfield technically works. Uh, it's in game and you can refuel other players. But again, like I said, those systems to really make the ships shine isn't really in the game yet. What I assumed would happen when CIG released a ship is that they would add missions where players can go and refuel NPCs that are stranded out in space. And I I've talked about this in other videos about every time CAG releases a mechanic, they should um, have missions enabled for that ship. Now I'm talking about that, actually, I've got a big one, a, uh, you know, a very recent one here is the SRV. Okay. And I know you guys are going to get me in the comments and be like, oh, you forgot the SRV. So let's add that in right now, just so we can have a visualization of what's going on. Okay. So yeah, we're talking about the Starfield. So the Starfield is a great example of a ship that I thought, okay, when they release this ship, they're going to enable the mechanic for players to do it. Now having missions available for these ships, kind of changes their ability to kind of make money on their own. Now in a fleet situation is, uh, not typically what this ship is going to be, um, or, or what players are really using it for right now, because, you know, again, um, in combat situations, the battlefield is pretty tight. So you're not really going to run out of fuel. Um, but the assumption around this ship, especially for me early on was, you know, maybe an org might buy this ship 
and have it in a fleet situation. So when all the ships are out doing something, they might run out of fuel. They need to be refueled. The Starfield refuels them and they keep going. But the way fuel tanks and travel times and everything works in Star Citizen, it, it would be too punishing to make fuel tanks that small. Um, so in most combat scenarios, let's say you have a big battle like Xenothreat, you're not going to run out of fuel. So you really don't need these types of ships for those situations. Um, now, a ship like the Starfare is really going to come into its own in a larger star system like Pyro. Right now, Stanton is relatively small and there are a lot of stations in pretty close distance that you can easily refuel at. So without missions and in a star system that is essentially, you know, small enough to get around easily, a ship like the Starfare really doesn't come into its own. Okay. So, you know, we're still waiting on a few things for the Starfare, but I think, uh, it's kind of a great example of where the support ship gameplay loop is right now. And it's very heavily dependent on if CIG is going to make missions for a lot of these support ships. So they can have gameplay that is independent of PVP. Okay. Then we have the crucible. Okay. So crucible is another one of those ships that I initially envisioned being in a fleet scenario. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you know, to use the Xeno threat example again, because it is, you know, the best example of a large fleet battle that we have right now, you have ships that are fighting another org, uh, and you want your fighters to be repaired. You know, you're fighting the other fighters. You go to the crucible and, uh, the SRV, for instance, tows them to the crucible. They get repaired. They fly back to the battlefield. Um, uh, strictly speaking, this ship, uh, for NPC missions, of course, it can be a situation where, you know, there's an NPC in space. You, you don't have this box with you, or you just have the arms or something like that. Because I, I believe there are two variations of the crucible where you can have the hanger or you can just have these arms open. And then there are other little arms that come out here and kind of remotely repair uh, the ship. So you essentially have a, a, a ship that's floating in space. Let's say, you know, the cutter scout is just floating in space right here and you fly and you have the arms in between this ship and then little arms will come out and fix it. Now there's also, I believe there was also talk of this having a uh, repair drones. I know a lot of you older backers have seen, you know, at the, the old rest stops when you stop, uh, to get repaired drones would come out and they would, uh, essentially, you know, hit your ship with a laser kind of how, uh, repairing your ship with RMC right now works. And so it, in my opinion, if CIG reintroduced that they could reintroduce that because again, the repair, the repair drones would work is exactly like how repair works now with RMC. Again, it's just, you know, something CIG has to build out and make happen. And the Crucible, I don't believe that it's really in development right now. Uh, it's not 100% necessary. Again, as a support ship, uh, its gameplay is not really there right now because uh, Repair is so easily accessible in Stanton. Now, again, in systems like Pyro and Nyx and whatever star systems we get in the future, that might not be the case and you might really need ships like these, okay? But again, there has to be that gameplay, that environment that encourages players to go to those star systems and then for support ships to follow. Okay. And then we have, uh, you know, the medical ships, these have right now, in my personal opinion, the most gameplay, but it's still really shaky because again, the way the game works right now is everything is very up to the players and, uh, you know, there's no real NPC rescue missions. Again, it's something that I feel like if CIG makes a equivalent NPC missions for all the gameplay loops in the game, you know, 
we really wouldn't be having this conversation. But because everything is player to player when it comes to support ships, it really you really don't know what you're walking into. You really don't know what you're going to get. Most of the time, well, I don't want to say most of the time, but in the past, there were a lot of bad actors. There were a lot of people who would do medical beacons to kind of trap medical players. Now, with the Apollo series, it's a little bit different. The Apollos can handle themselves a little bit better. I believe they are modular. You can swap all the different medical beds in them. They have higher tier of treatment than something like a Cutlass Red or Pisces R, which we'll look at. Well, we can see it here, the Pisces R uh, support ship. And this really is a good example of you know a support ship that could work well with the gameplay we have now because this could fit in the cabic you know this can fit in a lot of ships that have hangers because it's small enough and so if you and a couple of your buddies are planning to go out somewhere you can have the pisces R there as a support ship for whatever exploration or endeavor that you want to do on a planet. Let's say you're doing a bunker mission. And in a lot of cases, the med gun will fix the symptoms, but they can't cure the tear injury. So if you do have a, you know, a lower tear injury, it's not that serious. You can actually just fix it in the Pisces R. So that's why it's valuable. And because the time to kill is increasing, um, players will start to see those injuries more and more and uh, insta deaths less and less. So the medical gameplay loop, you know, it will look at here too with the Cutlass Red, because the Cutlass Red, again, this also has several beds in it. You, you have the ability to actually, you know, uh, it will be able to experience that gameplay a little bit more, you know, sooner. And then we have on here, I put, the Legionnaire. Now, this is kind of like an interesting conversation, whether the Legionnaire is a support ship for piracy or a support ship for fleet combat battles or a ship that is designed to work primarily on its own. We don't entirely know how the players are going to take advantage of this ship. In my personal opinion, I really see this as a piracy support ship or a fleet battle support ship. So if you are a piracy group, um, you can take out, you know, uh, the ships that can disable your target ship, and then you can all get on the Legionnaire and board that ship uh, through whatever, you know, hacking gameplay CAG releases in the future and uh, try to take over or steal the cargo of that ship. And again, because systems are changing with resource management and whatnot, boarding will change a little bit from, you know, just opening the cargo door to actually, you know, attempting to breach the airlock with a ship like this. Again, really have no idea how viable the Legionnaire is. That's why I kind of put it on this list. What is its money making potential on its own? I really don't know. Um, Maybe there might be missions where, uh, you know, you you have a mission giver and the mission giver wants you to steal a ship for some, you know, gang or whatever. Uh, the Legionnaire might come in handy with that mission. Again, the way Star Citizen works is that you don't really need a Legionnaire to do a mission like that because you could just EVA to board and steal that ship. Uh, but a mission like that where you have to board and steal a ship and bring it to a no questions asked location or something like that, uh, the Legionnaire might excel at that. Um, so if they, again, if they had missions like that, I would definitely say that this is a ship that can stand on its own. But right now I see it kind of more as a support ship for privacy and fleet situations. Okay. Then we have the SRV. Now the SRV was recently released and this is a ship that is considered a support ship because it is designed to be the tow boat uh, of, or, or tow truck of Star Citizen. It can take disabled ships, bring them to a uh, you know designated repair area and uh, then the ship can get repaired and be on its way. Um, you can make money with this ship on your own. Um, you can just, uh, you know, uh, reply to beacons from players 
or there might be missions in the future where there are stranded NPCs that you have to track the beam to repair locations. And, you know, uh, right now, it, taking ships like, or, or even salvage and uh, transporting it to different locations can make you a lot of money on your own. And in a support scenario, again, uh, with the example of the Crucible, in a fleet situation, you have the SRV and the Crucible kind of hang back, and the SRV would go out to the battlefield and tow, you know, disabled ships to the Crucible for repair to go back out. Again, we don't really know how uh, these ships, how, how valuable these ships will be to hold on to. If you are alive and in the cockpit, would it be better to hop into a fresh ship? Or is it one of those things where, you know, it is so difficult to get back into a new ship that it, it repairing that ship is a priority, okay? And again, in that case, uh, and it's really the real reason why I think the SRV really can't be used right now for, you know, towing other player ships to be repaired is because it's not... It doesn't make sense to repair right now. Uh, it, the amount of time that it takes to, uh, you know, put up the beacon, wait for somebody to respond to the beacon, then wait for that person to arrive to le your location, and then wait for that person to take you to the location to repair. Um, right now, again, you know, full survival me mechanics are not in the game yet and you know the death is not that punishing so right now it really just uh makes more sense to backspace and claim your ship um but again it really depends on the systems that crg puts in place you know how punishing is death how punishing is it to lose your ship uh what kinds of survival mechanics are involved in that before we really see the srv shine or come into its own Again, right now, the idea of the SRV is really cool and the missions around it could be really cool, but we really need to see how CAG makes the economy along a support vehicle like this before we can say, you know, this is a ship that's standing on its own or if it's a ship that, you know, I would recommend in a fleet type situation. You know, let's say your privacy org and you want to move the ship from its location to a more secure location, throw SRV in the mix, and you can tow the entire ship instead of boarding it right there. And in a lot of cases, that can be, you know, there could be a huge advantage to that in case that player, you know, passes away and they respawn and they try to come back to the scene of the crime and catch you or something like that, you'll be gone. I know people are also uh, making money with the SRV by doing those, you know, those missions where you have to get rid of the evidence and stuff like that. And this was making a lot of money with players doing that. Okay, so the next one is going to be the scout ships. Again, the Terrapin and the Cutter Scout. In my Cutter Scout video, I compared it to the Terrapin. And a lot of people were saying that the Terrapin is really a behind enemy lines type ship because it's so heavily armored. And I definitely agree with that. This is definitely one of those types of reconnaissance ships that you're going to want to send out uh, in combat situations to uh, aid the fleet. And the Cutter Scout, I would say, is kind of in a similar area where uh, you're getting... Uh, you know, information, you know, probably map information as CAG updates the map, we'll be able to drop pins for location. So let's say you, you find a cave or something like that. And that's why I really see the, this gameplay as kind of like a support gameplay, because let's say you're in the scout and you're surveying a planet, you find a cave, you find a river, you find an interesting forest or something like that. Uh, you drop a pin there on the map and you sell that information or you give or you relay that information back to your team uh the the people that you with let's say you're in a construction org for instance with the pioneer now the pioneer has advanced scanning uh equipment available to it as well 
but it's only you know but it's isolated to that one ship maybe you have a, a whole operation with a couple of scouts and again in that uh hangar video uh, some of the comments also pointed out that, you know, the Pioneer has a landing pad, something like that, where the scout or any other kind of surveying, sh uh, you know, ship could land on that landing pad or, or, or go out and survey ahead of the construction crew uh, and, you know, get information back to them before they do what they need to do. So in a support situation, I can, be, I can see the scout and Terrapin uh, being very useful, very helpful right now in its current implementation especially with the map being in the state that it's in you don't really have the ability to drop pins for locations that you find it's one of those things that you 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 really just have the same scanning mechanic as every other ship in the game uh it's really not isolated to make these two ships really shine in their profession and again there is really no npc missions attached to it like I know there were some missions in the past where there would be a, uh, a person that you have to find an investigation mission that you have to do and you have to find where that ship crashed. It would be in a, you know, specific region, uh, and you would just have to search that region and these ships would be kind of good for PVE gameplay like that. Um, but again, I think, uh, the, the NPC, the PVE mission, uh, from, you know, the, in the, in the missions tab where you, you get everything that you have to do, uh, uh, that gameplay is not super fleshed out. Uh, it's not bad, but again, you really see people using these just for fun, not really huge money makers right now. Okay. And then we have the ships that I, I think are a lot more dedicated support ships, ships that you don't really hear a lot about their independent gameplay and more about their gameplay in a fleet type situation or in a multiplayer type pvp situation and first is the vulcan this is a very cool ship this was one of my personal picks one of my personal winners from iae uh 2953 because you know it's a very comparable price for what you're getting okay this ship is a repair ship and it has drones it can refuel and really and truly it was one of my winners because the loaner for this ship is a starfare which is crazy <laughs> that ship is much more expensive much bigger than this ship um i don't know if that's still the case right now sometimes cag changes what loaner ships go to what ships but i was really you know surprised that the loaner for this ship is a star fail. but this yeah this does have the ability to refuel and repair uh ships and um again right now uh, i can see why cag doesn't really have a priority on you know leasing the ship putting in production all that type of stuff because there really is absolutely zero gameplay for this right now i mean with the star fail in its current state you know that is kind of a, 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 a good example of, you know, we have the functionality in the game and players can test it and we can balance for it. But uh, putting more work into it right now isn't entirely necessary until we know what direction this gameplay is going in. But I'm assuming this will also have a boom arm so you can refuel ships flying. Um, and it also has drones for repair um yeah this is a very cool ship uh i'm you know personally pretty excited for this ship i think the gameplay around it i think if again if you had npcs that were kind of stranded in space and you can fly out you can control the drones you can repair that broken down npc ship they pay you you fly away that would be a good experience and this will allow this ship to kind of shine on its own where you don't need it in a fleet situation but i think a lot of people see this ship in a fleet situation where you might even use this over a crucible where this could be a little bit closer to the action but again a uh, very cool ship but i, I will have to find out more from cig
Then we have the Expanse. The Expanse is definitely one of those ships that is heavily dependent on another ship because it has no ability to mine on its own. And I really don't see how CIG would implement missions for a ship like this. So this is the dedicated entry level refining ship. Okay. So this ship's job is to take mining salvage bags, uh, refine them, and then it has its own salvage bags. Uh, it has its own saddle bags that can be sold at locations. Okay. Now, um, one of the interesting things that, um, is a uh, kind of unique with this ship is that currently it is the only refining ship that has saddlebags now the um or, or i believe i believe both the galaxy and the Arastra has uh boxes for their refining capabilities and i also believe that the orion also uses boxes when it refines so it makes it a little less versatile in my opinion um not by much though because really all you're doing with these saddle bags is uh selling them uh, i don't know what the implementation will be for crafting if saddle bags will have an advantage for crafting over boxes um but at the end of the day uh, the only type of NPC mission I could see is maybe an NPC puts out a beacon or something like that and you show up and you you buy their mineable ore and salvage it. Um, uh, again, it's one of those things that I really don't know how CIG is going to make a mission around this. This is really one of those things that I see you needing to play with other players. This is a ship that I think a lot of orgs will have or a friend group. You know, you know, two other guys that play Star Citizen 2. Uh, you want to get into mining industrial. You take two prospectors and expands out. You spend the day mining and refining. And then you sell that stuff as a group. You split the money. Um, is that experience superior to, uh, you know, refining at a refinery station or, you know, something at a player base? Player bases will have refineries and whatnot. Um, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know how CIG is going to balance that. Again, this is something that might be more valuable in Pyro, but the Expanse is not a heavily armed ship, and it is a ship that will have a lot of valuables on it. So if you are going to do that, you might need to take security with you, and at that point, I feel like it just makes more sense to take an Arastra. Again, let's say it's you, and two other buddies or three other buddies so there's three or four of you you have two prospectors and expanse and let's say you take uh, uh, um you know a, a decent fighter like gladius or something to defend um i think again in that situation you're probably gonna do be able to do a lot more uh mining and refining in an arastra than with that setup and potentially make more money in the same amount of time. Um, because again, the Rastra has so many turrets is very, you know, heavily gun for an industrial ship, except probably something like the Reclaimer or Orion. I just don't know. I think CAG is really going to, you know, have to tell us a little bit more about the ship before, you know, I, I can say that it's really a, a, a good support ship. Now, then we have the Mantis. The Mantis, in my opinion, is a support ship because it is uh, under gunned for what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to, you know, pull ships out of quantum. And, uh, you know, people are never too happy about that. And they're probably going to want to shoot at you. And with the, the its combat capabilities, I feel like you definitely need to use this uh, in... A group of pirates in my opinion this is going to be potentially good for you know uh, bounty hunters and pirates the mantis being the only one that can do that but uh, because of that i would say the mantis best skill right now you know because it's the only ship that can pull uh other ships out of quantum is really just privacy 
Um, so that really makes the Mantis, in my opinion, a support ship because its best use case right now is in piracy where you're in a group of other pirates, you pull people out of quantum and you either extort them or attack them. And um, in a bounty hunting situation, you probably wouldn't pull someone out of quantum because you're in a bounty hunter situation, you're trying to be a little more covert to capture the person when their guard's down. So more than likely, you would follow them to their destination and then prevent them from going into quantum by using that device. So I see a bounty hunter, uh, you know, less likely to pull someone a quantum with a mantis um, and use something like the Zeus than, you know, really use the mantis here. So I, I, I really do see the mantis as a support uh, vehicle, but it definitely has its gameplay and its use case in the game right now with, uh, you know, pirates using this thing all the time to, you know, get people. It is a, a very effective vehicle. And then the last last one, the NPUV, not specifically the cargo, but the NPUV line. Uh, there is also a personnel variant and a new variant that was teased at CitizenCon that is designed around cargo. I believe it has a tractor beam and it can, you know, carry a full 32 SU cargo container. But these do not have jump drives, and you can really um use this as a placeholder for a lot of snub vehicles i know that the idris also comes with one um so in terms of snub vehicles and support vehicles to larger ships this category i do believe has gameplay right now because the barrier to entry is so low these ships are pretty cheap in game and on the store and the way you you would use them because they don't have a jump drive is really to just accommodate whatever larger ship they are flying with whether you know it's the pisces and the uh um Carrick or you know the 85x and the um the 890 jump these ships are really just designed to enhance the experience of those ships i really don't see anybody making any significant amount of money with these ships are uh, out on their own because they're small they don't have a jump drive there's not a lot of space to trade in cargo they don't have a lot of shields they don't have, you know weaponry and all this kind of stuff so um the combat snub fighters again they their story is a little bit different okay they do have a little bit more capability but again because they don't have a jump drive they're very reliant on a larger ship carrying them places so but there is in my opinion a decent amount of gameplay for them i think the support profession in general is a very fascinating profession i think there's still a lot for cag to do to fill uh, out that gameplay but what's so interesting about it is uh pyro and 4.0 uh kind of slated to fix a lot of the issues with the support gameplay. And I'm really fascinated to see uh, a new star system that, you know, would probably require a lot more of these uh, ships and their gameplay mechanics. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think Pyro will uh, uh, enhance these ships gameplay? Do you think bigger systems with less facilities will really, uh, you know, allow these ships to come out in these in their own let me know in the comments down below i really want to hear from you guys what you guys think about these ships i really appreciate all the love and support on the last video about carrier ships that video was so fun to make i love carrier ships they're kind of one of my favorite categories in the game it is very cool that everything is physicalized like that so i think carriers are very fascinating and support ships are very fascinating so yeah let me know what you guys think in the comments below thank you guys so much for all the support this channel continues to grow so much you guys you know with all the views uh i really appreciate it okay so that's gonna be it for me here today you guys like i always say at the end of these videos like the video if you liked it Subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Salute.